one deals with just public libraries and leaves control over the books in a local area and doesn't cause fiscal impact and the other applies to public libraries as well as school libraries does have a fiscal impact and does have state level standards <laughs> God bless America. Welcome to The Ranch, everybody. The podcast explores the people and happenings of Eagle, the Treasure Valley, and the greater state of Idaho. There are two bills, two notable bills up in the legislature right now that are attempting to deal with obscene and inappropriate materials in public libraries and public schools. The first is HB 384, and the second is SB 1221. And I have invited the authors for both bills onto the show to talk about them, and if I can get them on, that would be fantastic. Now, both of these are attempting to deal with bad books, but there are some big differences between these two bills. Let's start with SB 1221. This bill applies to public school libraries only. So if you're looking for a bill that addresses public libraries, this is not your bill. Now what this bill would do would essentially set up a committee to review books that get challenged within a school system. This committee could be comprised of the board trustees or of a mix of parents and employees within the school setting. What would happen is if I was a concerned parent or guardian, I fill out a formal appeal, then the committee decides, okay, this book is good or bad, it considers all the literary merits, it considers what was in it, what I was objecting to, and then makes the determination. We keep it or we drop it. If the committee drops it, I'm happy, they're happy, everybody's happy. But if they say, hey, we're gonna keep it, I can then appeal up. So then this would go to the Board of Education. Now, if the committee was the Board of Education, the conversation would already be over. But if the committee was made of parents and administrators, then it would go to the Board of Education. If the Board of Education decided to drop it, I'm happy, they're happy, everybody's happy. If the Board of Education decides to keep the book, then the conversation's over. Now, what can I do as a parent? Well, come election time, I can say, hey, fellow citizens, this Board of Education did not take out this book, and this is what's in this book. And then the community can decide, all right, look, Matt is either right, and this is not a good book, and the board left it in, and they're not reflecting our community values, or they can say, hey, Matt, this is really not that big of a deal. We think the board or committee actually made the right call, so we're not really on board with you here. But essentially, it gives it to the community, keeps local control over the books. And if the public school actually fails to set up a committee and run this process, they have to close until they do so. That's the only repercussion. Now, moving on to HB 384. This is a little different. So 384 deals with not just public school libraries, but all public libraries throughout the state. And there is no committee here. There's no local consideration. What HB 384 attempts to do is establish what is appropriate and not appropriate at a state level. That would then be applied to all the public libraries and public schools. You can still have a book that's inappropriate for minors in a public library under HB 384, but what needs to happen is that needs to be sectioned off somewhere that minors don't have access to. In the event that a minor does in fact succeed at getting one of the books or a parent feels that the book was promoted to the child or the child was even able to check the book out, there are consequences. If a minor does get a hold of this book, the minor or parent or guardian can actually send written notification to the library and the library has 30 days to rectify the situation. If the library doesn't do that, then the child, parent, guardian, whoever can actually take legal action and potentially win up to $250, as well as actual damages and any other relief available by law. Now, I highly recommend you read all of these bills in full yourself because there are lots of nuances here, but here's the criticism of each individual bill. The issues I've heard with HB 384 are actually that it takes control away from the local community and puts it in the control of the state. People don't feel like someone in Boise should be telling somebody in Coeur d'Alene what they can and can't have in their library or how their library should function. People are also concerned with the difficult of libraries actually setting up physical boundaries for books, so like another room or something like that, where somebody actually has to gain access to. They feel that monitoring who goes in and out of that area will be difficult, and they also think the legal fees associated with defending yourself if you're a library and somebody interprets a book or claims a book is inappropriate might be laborious and cost a lot of money. Again, fiscal impact. Now, opponents of SB 1221 say, First, it doesn't address public libraries, which is a thing. If you want reform in public libraries and not just school libraries, this bill doesn't do that. They also say that there aren't enough actual standards. Because of the nature of SB 1221, 
it gives control in a local community. So it doesn't attempt to set standards at a state level for what should or shouldn't be in libraries, but says, hey, look, locally, you guys can decide this. The state government is not going to get involved with telling you what you can and can't have in your public school libraries. If somebody in Coeur d'Alene wants something that somebody in Eagle or Meridian doesn't want, then Coeur d'Alene can deal with it. But the point is that you can take action against those on the committee. And the committee is ultimately made up of or appointed by the school board. So if you don't like what the committee is doing as a community, then you can get together and say, hey, we should vote out these school board members or have a recall or do whatever you want to do. Now, which bill is appropriate? I have no idea. But these are the two big ones that are being discussed right now. Again, I have invited in both authors to talk about the bill and what they think is appropriate. And we, the voters of Idaho, get to call our representatives and say, hey, I really like this bill or I don't like this bill. But ultimately, it's important to understand that one deals with just public libraries and leaves control over the books in a local area and doesn't cause fiscal impact. And the other applies to public libraries as well as school libraries, does have a fiscal impact and does have state level standards. I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. And again, I hope I can get the authors of these bills in to give you guys more information.